Um, I used to think it was true. They also say, you know, it's who you know. It's not who you know. It's not who you know. There's something about some people. You'll walk in a room and they'll say, that's the guy. Right. That's the girl. Um, I don't know if it's personality. I don't know if it's passion. I don't know what it is, but there's something there that is not just your ability to perform in front of a camera. The industry is something you can't put your hands on. It's not like a resume. You can have a resume that goes around the corner and you can't even get arrested. Now, what is that about? You can have no resume and be hired. You could be working at a bunny club. And, and you could be job. walking down the street. <laughs> Somebody says, hey you, I'd like you to star in my movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, so there's there's no um, one way of um, approaching this industry. So when you come in to meet with the producers and aud audition, you yeah. still audition, right? Because, oh yeah. Because you're playing different parts than what they think you can play. We still have to prove it. Yeah. And do you come in when you come into that room as the character, or do you come in as John Schneider and then go into the character? You know, it, uh, sometimes I, uh, a couple times like with the Ram Peters one, I came in as that, as that guy and got it right away. Uh, another time I came into a show called Dirty Sexy Money. Uh -huh. Same thing, came in and uh, was very touchy-feely, I'm a, a a handsome, well-dressed congressman who, at the beginning of it, we think is, uh, we find out is gay. Uh, so I was really, you know, like, hey, how's it going? I'm so glad you had me in here. You know, holding on just a little too long. Right. Are you nervous yet? I am nervous. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> that, yeah. kind of, that kind of a thing. Right. Um, and about 50% of the time that works. Uh, but, you know, you have, to, you have to play your game no matter what the field is. And so an I, actor should never be thinking casting no, when they go into audition. Don't think casting and don't pay any attention to the lyrics. You know, like he's a big guy with a beard and this and that, or he has a very high voice or a very low voice. Just, if you get a feel for the character after you've worked on it, you've got to really know who you are. And when you walk into the room, you can't be totally the character, but you've got to be some piece of the character. Then you do it, and the other device is get your butt out of there. Because you, you've dropped something in there. You've left an aura. Get out. You know, don't start. Once keep, you hit them, them with liking you before Keep them liking you or hating you. Yeah. Or whatever it is that stimulated them to make a call and get you a job. So I get in on the plane, and you can imagine. I have all these thoughts going on in my mind. Uh, and, oh, and I was reading with De Niro, and then I had to improvise with him. They told me this. So my mind is racing, you know, what's this going to be like? De Niro, the great improvise, improviser, you know, and everything. I broke down the script because when you improvise, I made sure I knew what my character's relationship was with every other character in the movie. Mm. So whichever direction he went in, I would know that this is the way my guy feels about him. This is the way my guy feels about him. Right. You know, to prepare for the improvisation, you know, the, the improvisation. The character that was perceived to be gay, and you, you did the touchy feel yeah. thing. Now, you were reading with somebody, was that a casting director? Or that was a casting director, okay. yeah. Did you actually touch them? Because there's all there's well, kind of an unwritten rule sometimes that an actor should not touch, you know. If you're I'm John star, Schneider. Yeah, you're John Schneider. I'm John right. Schneider. I'll touch okay. him, I'll kiss I, him, I, hello. <laughs> and they you like know. it, too. Well, yeah. you know, it's, it's uh, <laughs> there's a, a theory is that you want them to remember you. Right. And if you're somebody that's famous, a celebrity already, an icon, whee, uh, they're going to remember you anyway. But you don't want them to remember you because, oh my God, the guy from Dukes of Hazzard was here and I had his underoos. So we did the two scenes that were scripted. And one of them was the first and second thing. But he wasn't looking at me. He was reading and he wasn't looking at me. So I said, wow, OK, that's his call. You know, I'm not going to tell Bob, look at me, right? right? right. So then Harold said, okay, good. And I felt like just there wasn't a the connection yet. So what ended up happening was he said, let's do the improv now. And I said, uh, okay, all right, Paul, I got to tell you something. Now, when I said Paul, he looked up, you know? I said, Paul, I got to tell you something. This guy, Jelly, you know, I know he's tight with you. 
But whatever he was, he ain't no more. Mm. I mean, the guy's looking at life through the rearview mirror. Mm. And he was supposed to be really tight with Jelly, his character. Right. And he goes to me, and your eyes were like lasers. He said, don't worry about Jelly. Jelly's all right. He said, I'm just saying, boy. And then he started through a line. I threw a line. Boom, 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 boom. I walked out of that trailer, I said, I know I got this part. Huh. And it was through the improvisation that we connected. And I took it in my direction by, and where did that come from? On the plane, breaking down all the characters, knowing how he felt with Jelly, what I'm gonna do. I insult Jelly, he takes up for it, and we've got a connection. So whatever you can do to make it so people cannot forget you, I don't care if it's pick your nose. If you do so when I auditioned for Dukes, I brought a six pack of beer and opened one up, put my feet on the coffee table. Whoa. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I, didn't, I should excuse my manner. Oh, hell, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't hear, you want one? No, I got five more, you know. And uh, they remembered me. And uh, so you make an impression. Right. The old, as, as corny and as cliche as it might sound, you, 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 uh, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. Right. And I always tell actors, you know, they go in like to do an audition. I said, what are you doing? I said, you're doing them a favor. You're doing them a favor. That's right. Because they want to solve the casting problem. Right. They, the, if they can cast you, boom, they can move on to the next.